Hello, and welcome to this special Independence Day episode of Engage with Eagle Forum, a podcast to encourage the modern day woman in her vital role in shaping society. I'm guest host Colleen Holcomb, president of Eagle Forum, and I have the great privilege of being joined later today by one of my heroines, an exceptional patriot, Eagle Forum's President Emeritus, Uni Smith. This week, we're celebrating America's 244th birthday, but many Americans, particularly those who are familiar with the history of nations, are asking, will this be our last free 4th of July? They see local authorities allowing mobs to burn and loot and kill, and they're afraid to speak up for law and order. They see statues being randomly removed, Lincoln, Jefferson, Washington, all defaced in an obvious attempt to erase America's collective memory. But we're not hearing enough voices telling the truth that we need to learn from our history, not destroy it. We've seen so much political correctness and flat out bullying in the media and particularly social media that has either silenced or intimidated into silence the voices of true patriots, those who know that to defend America is to defend freedom and justice for all people. Liberals tell us that silence is violence. And what they mean by that is that Americans must signal their virtue by showing support for the causes and organizations the cultural elites have dictated need to be supported. But the truth is our silence in the wake of actual violence and rhetoric that inspires hatred for America is complicity with mobs that would destroy not just statues, but the very foundations of our liberty. Now, since its inception in 1975, Eagle Forum has stood for the sanctity of life from conception to natural death, all life. And as we've spoken to our members and families, we have found that Americans were in agreement over the horrific death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Fortunately, there were cameras that captured that act of brutality. So justice should, and we declare it must prevail. Law-abiding Americans also support peaceful demonstrations. But what about justice for those victims of the mob violence, a disproportionate number of which are minorities? What about the lives and the livelihoods of the innocent, their property, their communities? These riots are being led by self-proclaimed Marxists like the founders of Black Lives Matter, Antifa, and other insurrectionists. These groups are actual opponents of freedom. By teaching our children to hate America, these groups are extinguishing the growth the world's greatest hope for freedom and equal opportunity for all. Now is the time for Americans of all races, all faiths, and all walks of life to come together, overcome fear, and to speak out to defend our great nation. Well, to give us some insight into the historical underpinnings of what we're seeing today and what we as concerned Americans can do about it, we have with us Uni Smith, who's been serving as a volunteer grassroots activist fighting threats against our nation for more than 50 years. Uni is the founder of Eagle Forum of Alabama, who served as Eagle Forum's vice president for more than 40 years before taking over as president of Eagle Forum. Uni is currently our president emeritus. Uni graduated from Vanderbilt University with a degree in economics and business administration. Now Uni, I know that you, along with your late husband, former Congressman Albert Lee Smith, dedicated your lives to volunteer activism to fight exactly the kind of attacks that we're seeing against America right now. Why do you think that fight is so important? America is unique in all of history. Um, if we lose our freedom here now, we won't regain it. It's the only nation in history built on the principles of equality under God. That our rights come from God, not government. We need to understand um, the Declaration of Independence. We need to know it. We need to understand our Constitution. We're the only nation uh, founded on the principles that, 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 that government derives its power from the consent of the government, of the people themselves, and that government must support, not hinder, all the God-given rights. If we allow America to be destroyed as a city, there's no place else to go. There's no other nation that enjoys the freedom that we do. Destroying America would destroy our world's greatest hope for justice, for peace, and for equality. 
You're absolutely right. And you know, the concept of socialism is becoming popular, particularly among millennials, which is terrifying. Um, unfortunately, I know it doesn't surprise you. I know you, along with many of our Eagle Forum activists and our allies, have been fighting battles for years and warning against communist infiltration into our public education system. What can you tell us about that? Yes, we in, the, in Alabama in particular have had a project uh, which uh, we have, uh, through which we've reviewed textbooks, public school textbooks, and um, then since the advent of Common Core, I've seen this, the same destructive agenda coming through uh, nationally and into Alabama um, that um, defames, destroys the truth about America's history and um, promotes uh, a, a liberal pro progressive agenda. Um, we know that um, world domination has always been the goal of communists uh, while making the world safe for peace and freedom has been the goal of America in, in all that we've done internationally. We even rehabilitated the people who, whose nations we defeated in war, which I don't know of another country in all of history that done that, uh, not for any gain for ourselves, but um, for the, the people uh, themselves and to promote freedom for them. Um, communism. In 1963, um, there was read into the congressional record 45 current communist goals, which were compiled by Cleon Skousen. Um, and um, as in rereading those, I've realized that too many, too many, way too many, have largely, largely been accomplished in today's world in the United States. Several of those girls Goals are now being openly pushed by the Marxist BLM called Black Lives Matter movement. Um, let me just read a few of them. Capture one or both political parties. Discredit American culture. Eliminate all good sculpture from parks and buildings. Promote porn and obscenity. Discredit the Constitution. Discredit the American founding. Discourage American history. Support centralized control over everything, including education, as I said through Common Core. Now, discredit the FBI. Transfer arrest powers from police to social agencies. Create the impression that violence and insurrection are legitimate aspects of the American tradition. Not peaceful demonstration, but violence and insurrection. And that students and special interest groups should use united force to solve economic, social, and political problems. These are all antithetical to uh, what is America, to the core values of the American culture and the American government and the American people. And how remarkable, this was 1965, you said? This 1963, was 1963. They were reading the congressional record. Um, wow. Written by Dr. Cleon Skousen, who had been, um, spent most of his career before he retired as um, with the FBI in, in, in studying um, the subversive nature of communism in our country. And it sounds like a newspaper today. It sounds like a report of exactly what's going on today. Yeah, and you look at uh, the Marxist um, statements on the Black Lives Matter website, and uh, you see that this is what they're doing. Yeah. Wow. Well, I know you mentioned that Eagle Forum has opposed Common Core. What are some other things that Eagle Forum has done to try to promote sound education? Well, yeah, we uh, twice in recent uh, recent national conference, we had um, Wilfred McClay. I don't think you, I don't know if you can see this, but it, the way this is set up now. But but this is his book, Land of Hope, and it it is, is written uh, out last year as a textbook. It's called An Invitation to the Great American Story. This is something that we promoted that that um, 
our listeners hopefully will want to read and promote themselves for their schools and within their family because it's very readable. And then there's the 1776 project, which um, is um, is um, was formed by a number of of our black friends who are academicians uh, to counter the 1619 project, which is just made up history. It's 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 uh, saying wrongly that the U.S. started in 1619, and that's another long story which we can get into if you'd like to. But um, well, those are. Uh, this book, and then there's another one that um, that we um, have um, promoted recently called Debunk Debunking Howard Zinn, um, which uh, takes on the whole fake history that has promoted socialism to a generation um, through uh, a book by Howard Zinn. And thankfully, Mary Graybar has come out with a book that shows the fallacies in in his uh, Marxist view of history. So, I mean, they're just as we're, Eagle Forum is about to launch another e-publication on education. They just, we've, we've been very, very involved for years in trying to um, show, teach, promote what is sound and good and true uh, uh, for our education systems, especially K through 12. People talk, you know, about the colleges being problematic. Well, of course they are. They have been for a long time. But in more recent years, primarily thanks to Common Core, it's K through 12. The anti-American agenda uh, just permeates K through 12 now. And the parents need to realize that. And they, they need to take the responsibility to teach their children the truth about America's wonderful story. You're exactly right. Well, we're so thankful for your leadership in that regard. And on this incredibly divisive issue of race and the issue of slavery, of course, we all know slavery is a scourge on our nation's history. But I had the privilege last year of attending the celebration of the 400th anniversary of the first Africans landing at Fort Monroe. It's just a few miles from where we live. And it was wonderful. And it was so encouraging to see such a beautiful celebration of hope and progress. And it was politicians speaking all across the political spectrum. And now, unfortunately, the misinformation, like what you've talked about and what Eagle Forum, I'm very thankful, has been fighting, has led to, you know, away from that progress and away from that message of hope to something like Senator Tim Kaine, his outrageous statement that America created slavery. Can you tell us the truth about the history of slavery in America? Yeah, I've learned a lot from Bishop Jackson, uh, who, again, is an African-American gentleman. Um, and, and he said basically this. He said, the first Americans who, which is, I've read too, uh, who arrived in Virginia in 1619 were indentured servants. Um, that's what the place where you visited. I didn't know that's me. The Portuguese had developed the Atlantic slave trade 150 years earlier, before 1619. European colonies didn't have to invent slavery. It was already part of the culture of that day. America just inherited it. Furthermore, there was no United States when the first Africans arrived on this continent. There was no America as we know it. There were British colonists who came from Europe where slavery was a fact of life. America didn't invent slavery or the slave trade. Establishing codes for management of slavery, while abhorrent, is not the same as creating the institution itself. This is not a justification of slavery, but an acknowledgement of the realities of the 17th century world and the context of slavery's introduction to this continent. Slavery was indigenous to Africa and African Americans, um, excuse me, African Muslims, African Muslims introduced Europeans to this immoral practice. Slavery couldn't have happened without the cooperation of African kingdoms and tribes. So slaves were taken against their will, but by their fellow Africans who were their captors. Um, Mauritania in Africa has a vibrant slave trade to this day. 
human trafficking is a form of slavery and people of all races are per perpetuating it and being victimized by it. Even in these United States, of course, Eagle Forum has strongly uh, opposed this and addressed it throughout our organization. But starting 400 years ago, as the economies of Europe, North and South America, and the West Indies came to re rely on slave labor, slavery was institutionalized. It's not a racial problem. It's a human problem. It still exists in various parts of the world. By contrast, America is a land of freedom and one was one of the very first nations to abolish slavery. We are um, the, only, the only nation that founded itself on the lofty idea that is expressed in our Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those words have resonated throughout the centuries. They've been quoted by people all over the world and especially in socialist communist countries where the systems lead power and wealth in the hands of the few and everyone else is in dire straits under strict state control. It, those words are uh, hope from the land of hope. That's exactly right. Well, and it's so discouraging and so disheartening, you know, especially when we have seen a national tragedy that we would hope would bring people together. And we want to do things that, right, we want to point people to solutions. And as you've pointed out, the solution is making a stronger America, which we have the founding documents and we have the infrastructure to be able to do. So I really appreciate that historical perspective. And Yuni, what advice would you give to viewers and listeners who want to do what they can to fight racism while protecting America? Well, of course, they'll do what, what, uh, what they need to do locally within their own uh, places of worship and business and the schools where their children go and, and the relationships that they build are the most important. Um, but we as a nation can build on the legacy of our founding fathers. They weren't perfect people, but we need to remember, <laughs> neither are we. They were educated, prosperous men with families, but they considered liberty so much more important than personal security that they mutually pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. The signers, the 56, paid a high price for the freedom they bequeathed us. Of those 56, few were long to survive after they signed on July 4th, 1776. Their names weren't made public for six months because they knew they were and they were captured. They'd be hanged as traitors. Five were captured by the British and tortured before death. Twelve had their homes from Rhode Island to Charleston sacked, looted, occupied, or burned. Almost all suffered bankruptcy and their families were persecuted. Two lost sons in the army and two had sons captured. Nine died in the war. All of their families were scattered. You know, the question is, what about us today? I mean, God has blessed America beyond all measure. All of us. He's provided the greatest degree of individual liberty and opportunity with the highest standard of living in recorded history. The American ideal cannot stand alone. Her remaining statues, these heroes and heroines, they can't come back to life. It's up to us. And uh, we need to do what the Lord leads us to do to preserve uh, our heritage for future generations. Well, that's exactly right. I know we were talking within Eagle Forum. This past week, there was a wonderful column written by Stanley Kurtz. Uh, in National Review, urging Americans to overcome the fear of being called racist and to proudly gather together to show our patriotism, to sing the national anthem, the way so many celebrities were gathering on Zoom to sing John Lennon's Imagine. Now at Eagle Forum, we have some beautiful singers. I'm not one of them and we know. Oh, are I. <laughs> so for those of us who were not gifted with that particular blessing, 
we decided that we would urge people to gather together, particularly over this Independence Day, to read the Declaration of Independence. So you've alluded to this and you've mentioned some of it before, but why is the Declaration of Independence so important? Well, it's America's, the Declaration is America's great religious document. It mentions God, recognizes God five times as the, the lawgiver, the creator, the supreme judge, the giver of all rights, our divine protector. And you look at our, our coinage, um, I have, oh, here's a nickel, yeah. Uh, all right, here it says, one nation under God, and e pluribus unum, out of many, one. There's our national motto, and what we need to do, right on this coin, to unify, uh, behind, or under, sorry, under God, and then, the word liberty. While the angry mobs today spew nothing but deceit and division and hate and false hope, we need to stand firm, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. That's what Eagle Forum wants. That's what all Americans want, really. That's exactly right. That is, yeah, that's certainly a value that unites us. And I know you have a passion for children and teaching children. How would you encourage parents to talk to their children during this turbulent time in our history? Well, teach, our, teach your children what's good about America. I, I watched a video, as a matter of fact, you told me about it, uh, Colleen and I was glad to have found it and watched it by uh, Dennis Prager entitled Why I Love America. That would be a fun thing for parents to find and, and watch with their children. And then what about making a video of, of your own with your family or, or with the children with their grandparents? Um, that would be a good keepsake and a good, good object lesson for them. Um, of course, parents will, will want to teach their children to respect others and to expect respect from others to respect their local police um, and, to, and to, to understand that one day they will be responsible to keep America strong and free and uh, you know, teach, them, teach them how to be good citizens. Even Stanley Kurtz recommended in this article, sing uh, for America. There's the Star Spangled Banner. You, you said you can't sing. I certainly can't. My children will attest to that. Um, as will others who sit around me at church. But um, we've got the Star Spangled Banner, um, God Bless America, uh, Our Country Tis of the Sweet Land of Liberty. There's so American beautiful. Those phrases uh, are, are need to become alive again today. In, in our hearts and, and in our families and throughout our nation because we must appreciate what we have in order to preserve it for future generations. You're absolutely right. As you were talking, I thought there was a popular TikTok video that, which I don't even know how to do TikTok, but that, <laughs> but that Jennifer Lopez and her family did very cute, but then a lot of families were getting together to do this dance. Um, and wouldn't it be nice to have families getting together to do short uh, TikToks or what, you know, whatever medium they choose, but to talk about why they love America. I think that's such a wonderful idea. Yeah, um, we need everybody who's listening to join with us in Eagle Forum. We need your participation, we need your ideas, we need your influence. We need to stand together. It's too important not to. It's a critical time in our nation. That's absolutely right. Recognize it, and we need to engage it. We sure do. That's absolutely right. Well, amen. Uni, thank you so much for joining us. And on behalf of Eagle Forum, we wish everyone a very happy Independence Day. As Uni said, we invite you to get involved with Eagle Forum by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, subscribing to this podcast. We would love to connect with you. So from our house to the State House to the White House, this is Engage with Eagle Forum.